Hi, this is Babak. In this video, I will continue my discussion on mathematical induction from a theory point of view. This is the fourth video in this series of videos. The main goal of this video is to show that SPMI, the strong principle of mathematical induction, implies the principle of mathematical induction. If you recall from the previous video, there we showed that PMI implies SPMI. So the main goal of this video is to show the converse of that statement. First, let me just give you a brief overview of the content of this video. First, I reformulate the strong principle of mathematical in induction. In a slightly diff I express it in a slightly different way, which is more suitable for our purpose uh, in this video. Then I prove a lemma in propositional logic. And now in the third item, finally, I will use this reformulation and this lemma to prove that SPMI, strong principle of mathematical induction, indeed implies the principle of mathematical induction. Then, I will combine GPMI from the previous video, if you remember, the general principle of mathematical induction, where the base of induction starts from a number different from 1. I will combine GPMI and SPMI to introduce the general strong principle of mathematical induction, GSPMI for short, yet another variant of mathematical induction. Then I will present a simple example to show how GSPMI is employed in practice to prove statements uh, involving natural numbers. Okay, now I want to reformulate SPMI, the strong principle of mathematical induction, and express it in a slightly different way. As you will see, this new formulation is more suitable for the main goal. Of this video which as I mentioned in the introduction is to show that SPMI indeed implies PMI okay so let me remind you of the statement of the strong principle of mathematical induction P of n is a predicate involving the natural number n we know that this predicate enjoys two properties first one is P of 1 is a true statement. The second one is that for every natural number k, the truth of P of 1, P of 2, up to P of k imply the truth of P of k plus 1. If this predicate enjoys these two properties, then we showed that the predicate P of n is true for all natural numbers n. Uh, I want to uh, reformulate the second item in a slightly different way. Okay, so let me remind you of what we had before. Uh, okay, now this lemma that you see here is a lemma that I just copied and pasted from uh, video part 2. There we proved this lemma. So let me read the lemma once more. Let P and Q be statements. Then the conditional statement if P then Q is true, if and only if, if P is true, then Q is true. Okay? The proof was actually was very simple. You can refer to that with you to refresh your memory. I want to write a similar lemma here. But because, again, the proof is very simple, I will skip the proof, okay? So, I would write a lemma here. So, I want to generalize this lemma in some way. So, I would say that let p sub 1, p sub 2, up to p sub k, and finally b, p sub k plus 1 be statements. Then, the conditional statement P 
one conjunction with P two conjunction continues until conjunction with P sub K if this then P sub K plus one is true if and only if again this statement if P one uh, and P2 and up to PK are all true then P sub K plus 1 is true so there is no difference from logical point of view between this statement and uh, this statement to be so this statement is true if and only if this statement is true that if p1 p2 up to pk are all true then p of k plus 1 is also true okay now using this you see that this statement that I have written down here is exactly similar to this statement that we have in the second item of the strong principle of mathematical induction okay so I, now I want to reformulate my principle so let me write it with a different color so new formulation of the SPMI okay so let me write it briefly so what we have PN is a predicate of, of course predicate involving the natural number n so let me keep it short we have two properties number one we know that P of 1 is true Instead of writing this item in words, I will use this lemma to rewrite this in a slightly different way. Number two, I would say, for all k in the set of natural numbers, p of 1 and p of 2 and up to and p of k, uh, this conditional statement, is true okay so instead of saying that if p1 is true p2 is true of and pk is true then p of k plus 1 is true I have written it in this form using this lemma then if if the predicate pn p of n enjoys these two properties I can conclude that p of n is true for all n in n okay so you will see that uh, writing the set second item in this form is more suitable for our goal here in this video okay now I state a lemma in the propositional logic and prove it for you then I will use this lemma to prove the main theorem of this video namely uh, SPMI implies PMI okay but let us now concentrate on this lemma and its proof let me read the statement in the lemma for you first let Q sub 1 Q sub 2 up to Q sub m plus 1 be statements then the statement this statement that you see here is a tautology so what do we mean by a tautology so it means that regardless of the logical values that one might assign to these individual statements true or false in any combination this statement turns out to be true always regardless of how we assign true false to these statements from q1 to qm plus one the way that I want to uh, prove this is by contradiction okay so I would say uh, by by the way let by simply for simplicity of writing let me call this 
a capital P and let me call this capital R for example and now my goal is to show that if P then R is a tautology meaning that it is always true and I want to use proof by contradiction so I will start with this sentence assume that this is not the case And it is possible for if P then R to be false. Okay, now let us explore what would be the consequences of this statement that if P then R is false. So if you say that if P then R is false, I can immediately conclude that this is a conditional statement. For a conditional statement to be false, there is only one possible choice for P and R. The premise should be T and the conclusion should be false. There is no other options available. So I immediately conclude that P is true and Q, uh, sorry, R is false. Okay, now let us explore the consequences of this. So you are saying that P is true. But let me look at the structure of P more closely. You see, this is P. If I call this a statement alpha 1, if I call this a statement alpha 2, and if I call this a statement alpha m, then what is p? p is nothing except this conjunction alpha 1, conjunction alpha 2, up to conjunction alpha m. And now you are telling me that p is true, so this means that this conjunction is true. So it means that each one of these statements have to be true, including the last one alpha m so when you say that p is true i can immediately conclude that the last statement is also true so this implies that the last statement here of course all of them are true but i only need this last statement so this one uh, q m plus one is true Okay, for uh, future reference, let me put this in a box here. Yes, and let me uh, give it a number here. Now, let us go and explore the consequences of this statement. Now, we are saying that R is false. So, what can I conclude from this? Let me look at the structure of R now. R itself is a conditional, yes? So, for example, you can call this one uh, alpha, and then R is alpha then QM plus 1. So, the structure of R is a conditional. When you say that R is false, it means that the premise is true, but the conclusion is false, okay? So, I conclude that alpha is true, but q sub m plus 1 is false. But what is alpha? Alpha is nothing except this q1 and q2 and q3 and up to and qm is true and q sub m plus 1 is false. But now immediately I can conclude that when you say that this conjunction is false, uh, is true, it means that all these statements are true, including the last statement. So, I can write Q sub M is true, and as before, I repeat the final sentence that Q sub M plus 1 is false. But now, 
that you know that q sub m is true and q sub m plus 1 is false, if I ask you evaluate the logical value for this conditional statement, what you say? You say that this is true, this is false, so this conditional is false. So this implies that this conditional is false. Uh, let me, let me, yes, so this conditional is false. And then let me put this in a box again so that we can compare these two results easily. So let me call it number two. But this is contradiction, yes, you see. Here, this statement is claiming that this conditional is true. Number two claims that the same conditional is false. So that's a contradiction. So I would say that two contradicts one. Okay, and then we are done. So, assuming that this can be false gives rise to contradiction, so it cannot be false. Okay? Okay, finally we are ready to prove this theorem. The SPMI implies the PMI. The strong principle of mathematical induction implies the principle of mathematical induction. Before starting the proof, let me go to the previous page in the beginning of the video, if you remember. I reformulated SPMI in a slightly different way. But here, because I want to work with SPMI and PMI simultaneously, and I don't want to have a confusion between the letters that I am used for predicates, so let me change the letter P here to letter Q, and let me change letter K to letter M. And then I will essentially write the same thing in a summarized way. I want to have this in front of our eyes when I am doing the proof. Okay, so what I do, let me write, change my color. So this is not part of the proof. So I would write SPMI. And I will try to write this in a summarized way. So QN is a predicate. Yes. We know that this predicate satisfies two conditions. First, Q1 is true, Q of 1 is true. Two, for all m in the set of natural numbers, this statement is true. Q of 1 and Q of 2 and Q of m, then Q of m plus 1 is true. So this is what we know. And then SPMI asserts that Q of n is, so I would say then, Q of n is true for all n in n. So what is a PMI? So PMI has this structure. Here, P of n is a predicate. The first condition is exactly the same, so P of 1 is true. The second one is different, so for all k in n, this, is, this conditional statement if P of, k, P, P of k, then P of k plus 1, this statement is true. We want to show that then, so let me write this statement, then P of n is true for all n in n. Yes? Here, in this uh, theorem, I am taking SPMI for granted. And I want to show that this is also a true statement. So the strategy is this. I choose a predicate which satisfies these two conditions. I show that this predicate also satisfies these two conditions. And then because I am taking SPMI for granted here, I can use the assertion in the SPMI to conclude that this predicate also enjoys the conclusion of SPMI, namely P of n is also true for all natural numbers n. So this is the strategy of proving this. 
And actually, I have only one task for me left. Why? Because the first property of the predicate in PMI is exactly this first property of the predicate in QSPMI. So now you, no, you now understand that I need to use this property that my pr predicate satisfies to show that that predicate also satisfies this uh, property. So that is the main thing that I want to show here. So let me write by blue, this is the proof. So I would say let P of N be a predicate regarding natural numbers N, I don't write it, be a predicate such that we know two uh, things about it. P of 1 is true and the statement if P of K then P of K plus 1 is true for all K in N. Okay? Now I want to show that this predicate that has these two properties also satisfies this property. How should I prove that? I would say let M be a fixed natural number N. We show that the statement, the following statement is true. What is the following statement? The following statement is this. P of 1 conjunction with P of 2 conjunction up to P of M then conditional P of M plus 1. So now I focus here to prove this statement is true based on this assumption about my predicate. Okay, how can I use that? I would say that you, you are telling me that this statement is true whatever I choose for k in the set of natural numbers. So it means that if I choose k equal to 1, then p of k, p of 1, then p of 2 is true. Yes? And now if I choose k equal to 2, then this statement will... Actually, we, I will have this statement. If P of 2, then P of 3 is also true. Yes, so let me just repeat. We know that this statement is true regardless of the value of K that I choose it from the set of natural numbers. So if I choose K equal to 1, this statement should be true. If I put K equal to 1 here, this becomes this becomes 1, this becomes 2. If I choose k equal to 2, this becomes 2, this becomes 3. So, and then I can continue finally, I will reach to this value m that I have already chosen. So, for k equal to m, I can say that this, pre this uh, statement is also true. Okay? So, all these statements are true. But I know that if all these statements are true, the conjunction of these statements, these statements are, is also true. So it means that P of 1, if P of 1, then P of, sorry, P of 2, and if P of 2, then P of 3, and P of M, then P of M plus 1, is true. Okay, so that is uh, something we showed, but this is not exactly what we want to show, yes? They are different. So we showed that this statement is true, but my goal is to show that this is true. We haven't done that yet. This is where the lemma actually comes to my help. Okay, so let me 
put this lemma in front of our eyes again so let me try to make it a little bit bigger so that you can see that okay so do you remember in the previous slide I showed that this statement is a tautology okay so regardless of these statements so whatever you choose as a statements from Q1 up to QM this combination is a tautology is a statement which is always true okay so now let us see on the other hand so I would say on the other hand uh, on the other hand based on the previous lemma lemma the following statement is a tautology which statement let me write it here instead of q1 q sub 1 i put p of 1 instead of q of 2 i put p of 2 up to instead of this one I put P of M and then finally instead of this I put P of M plus one okay so what I am what I'm writing here is exactly this statement but I will do these replacements that I mentioned so which statement so I would say that P of one if P of one then P of two and if P of two then P of three and up to if p of m then p of m plus one yes and the whole thing conditional with this p of one p of two p of m uh, then p of m plus one yes so uh, this is a tautology that's exactly uh, this lemma okay now we don't need that lemma so let me make this bigger now so now based on that lemma you know that this statement is true but this statement is a conditional statement yes this is the premise and this is the conclusion we know that this conditional is uh, true and if you look here the premise is exactly this statement that you see here and we showed that it is true so the premise is true the whole combination is also true so the conclusion is that this statement should also be true otherwise this conditional statement cannot be true so therefore since the premise of this conditional uh, so I can give it a name here a star is true therefore uh, the statement P of 1 and P of 2 and P of M then P of M plus 1 is also true yes and then we are done so let me just repeat a little bit so here uh, we knew that P of 1 is true so I don't have any problem with showing the first property I know this is true using this this is true for all possible values k from the set of natural numbers and using this lemma that I proved on the previous slide we were able to show that that predicate also enjoys the second property necessary for the SPMI to go for its conclusion okay so this predicate automatically we showed satisfies these two conditions so I can you now I am taking SPMI for granted in this theorem 
Yes, so I can use the conclusion of SPMI and conclude that okay, your predicate also satisfies is true for all choices of n from the set of natural numbers. Okay. Now let me just uh, uh, see what we have we had. So if you remember, we had this equivalency between these two statements in the first video. In that video, I showed that WOP, the well-ordering principle, is uh, equivalent to PMI. In the previous video, I showed that WOP implies SPMI. We also showed that PMI itself implies SPMI. Yes? Okay. That was a little bit strange because usually in mathematics when we say that a statement is a strong statement, is a stronger statement, it means that this statement implies the other one, the weaker one. But apparently it was the other way around. Might be you might think that it was better to call PMI SPMI and SPMI PMI. But here in this uh, theorem, we showed that actually there is no difference. None of them is actually stronger than the other one because we already knew that PMI implies SPMI. We just showed that SPMI also implies PMI. So this means that these two statements are actually equivalent. So PMI is equivalent to SPMI. There is no difference between these two. So any problem can be solved using PMI, and essentially it can be solved, in principle it can be solved using SPMI. Okay, and then, uh, so we learned that WOP, PMI, and SPMI are all equivalent statements regarding the set of natural numbers N. So we have three mutually uh, equivalent statements regarding the set of natural numbers n. So that's a good information to know. Uh, okay, now I want to present another uh, variant of mathematical induction known as the general strong principle of mathematical induction. Okay, so I think it's a good idea to see what we have so far. Okay, so if you remember, we started with PMI, the principle of mathematical induction, that I have written it here for you. And we generalize it in the sense that in PMI, we have to start from P of 1 to be true. But then, in the general principle of mathematical induction, actually we relax this condition and we said that, okay, it's completely acceptable if you do not start from 1, you can start checking the truth of P of n node for some integer n node, even if the integer is a negative one. But, of course, uh, the price that you need to pay is to, for the second one, you assume that K is greater than or equal to n node, and then try to convince yourself that P of K implies P of k plus 1. And what you get, of course, is also a little bit limited. You cannot conclude that P of n is true for all integers or for all natural numbers, but the only thing that you can conclude is, is that P of n is true for all integers greater than or equal to n node. So when we say general in the context of mathematical induction, it means that we are changing the base of the induction from 1 to another no integer number n node. Now, so probably you can guess what will happen. So PMI changed, we, we generalized that and got GPMI. In the same way, I want to generalize SPMI and get GSPMI. Yes? I think it's very easy if you compare these two things. Uh, and then you can immediately write this one yourself. So let me show it to you here. So, strong principle of mathematical induction, which we discussed uh, mainly today, is this one. And then I want to write another variant, general, the general strong principle of mathematical induction. So you see, uh, I would write it like this. I would say P of n is a predicate involving the integer n with the following properties. So now you can compare. 
P of n node for some integer n node is true. That's exactly what I have in GPMI. And then for every integer k greater than or equal to n node, then I will try to mimic this statement. I would say that the truth of P of n node, the truth of the next one, P of n node plus 1, up to the truth of the last one, P of k, implies the truth of the next one, P of k plus 1. If this happens, then I can conclude that P of n is true, but not for all integers. True for all integers n greater than or equal to this n node. Everything that you need to prove this uh, is ready for you. I think that would be a good idea if I leave the proof of GSPMI as an exercise for you. Uh, okay, what I want to mention that I think that's also very clear for you that we showed that these two statements, these two statements are equivalent. This is also clear that these two statements are also equivalent. Okay? Uh, Okay, so I just want to give an example so that we can see how this general uh, strong principle of mathematical induction work in practice. Okay, I, fin I finalize this video by presenting an example in which I will use the general strong principle of mathematical induction to prove a statement involving natural number n. This example has been chosen from the following book, Mathematical Proofs, A Transition to Advanced Mathematics, 3rd edition, Pearson, 2013, written by these three authors. The reason that I have chosen this example is because this example doesn't involve heavy calculations and it will illuminate the logic and the theory behind mathematical induction as I will tell you, uh, as I will illuminate it for you. But let me read the question for you first. Show that for every natural number n greater than or equal to 12, uh, there are non-negative integers a and b such that n equals to 3 times a plus 7 times b. Okay, because so far we have studied different variants of uh, mathematical induction, the first thing that you need to have a good judgment about is which version I have to use for the problem that I have in hand, yes? Okay, um, so this statement that n is greater than or equal to 12 motivates me that this should be a general version of some mathematical induction, yes? Because uh, in the normal mathematical induction, the base of the induction is the checking the truth of p of 1, but this problem itself is claiming that this is not valid for n equal to 1, it is valid after 12, yes? Starting from 12 and after that. So this is definitely clear that I have to use a general version of mathematical induction. That I have to use, I cannot say have to use, but if that I use a strong principle of mathematical induction for that case, it is not evident in the beginning. It becomes evident when you start solving the problem. I will illuminate this point again uh, in the correct time uh, when I can actually show this in practice to you. Okay, so here the first step that you need to do is that while looking at this sentence I realize that I have to use a general version. So the thing that you need to do is to write the predicate that you want to apply any version of mathematical induction on it. So, what is the P of n here? This is this predicate. There are non-negative integers, uh, say a and b, such that 3 times that a plus 7 times that b is equal to n. So, that is my predicate. I want to apply a version of mathematical induction on it. Okay, so the first thing that I need to understand is that this 12 plays the role of n node, yes? So the first thing that I want to do is to check the truth 
of p of n node, which is p of 12. So what is p of 12? p of 12 means that I have to go to my predicate and replace every appearance of n with this value of 12. But in the whole predicate, n appears in only one place, I have to remove it and replace it with 12 and read this statement. There are non-negative integers a and b such that 3, of a, 3 times a plus 7 times b is equal to 12. This is no longer a predicate, it's a statement. It is either true or false. Okay? But is it true or false? It is true because if I choose a to be 4 and b to be 0, then this becomes exactly equal to 12. And 4 and 0 are both non-negative integers. So this statement that there are non-negative integers a and b such that 3 times a plus 7 times b is equal to 12 is indeed true. <coughs> so p of 12 is true since 3 times 4 plus 7 times b, uh, 0 is equal to 12 and 4 and 0 are both non-negative integers. Okay. Uh, now let me start uh, writing uh, item number two in the appropriate language of the problem and then of course I will motivate you why we should understand that we have to use a strong version of mathematical induction. Why it is better to use this strong version. Okay, so I would say let k greater than or equal to n node, but n node in this problem is 12. Let k greater than or equal to 12 be a natural number. such that such that what p of n node p of n node plus 1 up to p of k that k that i have chosen are all true statements okay such that all of the following statements are true Okay, which statements? P of n node, P of 12, P of n node plus 1, which is P of 13, the next one, P of 14, and I continue until I reach to P of that number k. But let me, it's instructive to write two previous steps in this problem. You will see why. Okay. So now my assumption is that k is a natural number greater than or equal to 12. And now I am assuming that all these statements that you see here are all true. Okay? We show that the next one, p of k plus 1, is also true. It's not very clear yet why I have to use the strong version of a mathematical principle. Uh, okay, but let me let me rewrite this sentence in English. Okay, so I want to uh, show that this statement is true. So let me see how this statement reads in the first place. What I need to do, I need to go to my predicate. I need to replace every appearance of n, which in this case is in one place, with this k plus 1, and tr this becomes a statement. I have to show that the statement is true. So let me write p of k plus 1 explicitly in front of our eyes. So there are non-negative integers
A and B such that 3 times A plus 7 times B is K plus 1. I replace N with K plus 1. Okay. But the, now, uh, so I want to show the truth of this statement. What I have in my hand is the truth of a bunch of statements. I know that all these statements are true. Uh, okay, if you just see that k plus 1, this is an observation, so let me write it with a different color. So this is an observation that k plus 1 is equal to k minus 2 plus 3, yes? 3 plus minus 2 is positive 1. But why this is useful, this observation? Because I want to say something about k plus 1, but k plus 1 is this 1 plus 3, and I know the truth of this statement for k minus 2. Apparently, the, the statement of p for k minus 2 is among the list of my true statements. So it means that I know that this statement, this predicate, becomes a true statement if n is k minus 2. And actually this is the reason that now I understand that it is more suitable to use a strong version of mathematical induction. Why? Because if I want to just use the normal mathematical induction, what I want to show, I want to show that p of k plus 1 is true based on the truth of p of k. But you see that p of k in this problem has nothing immediately clear. There is no real immediate connection between k plus first step and p of k, you see. But this observation shows that k minus 2, which is not the immediate previous step, it is three steps back here. The connection between pk plus 1, this pk plus 1 is connected to this point, not to the exact previous point. So that is one motivation that it might be better to use the strong version of mathematical induction. Okay, now you see that, okay, apparently, the reason that, so there is a delicate point here. So you see that p of k minus 2 is among the list of true statements. So it means that, see, I would write like this, and then I will say why, what is the flaw in this argument, okay? This is not 100% wrong, but this is not complete. Since p of k minus 2 is true, how should I know that? Because I see that this is among the list of true statements that I have, yes? Uh, so since this is true, there exist, there exist uh, non-negative integers a prime and b prime such that a uh, seven three times sorry three times a prime plus 7 times B prime is K minus 2. Okay? Then I add 3 units to both sides. Then it becomes 3A prime plus 7 times B prime is equal to. When I add 3 to that side, it becomes K, uh, sorry, uh, plus 3. It becomes K minus 2 plus 3. But on the left-hand side between these two, I can factor a 3 out. It becomes a prime plus 1. Then I will have 7b prime. On the right-hand side, I will have k plus 1. So you see, what I have written here is based on the truth of the statement p of k minus 2. But now, if I ask you what type of number is this, you would say that because you told me that a prime is a non-negative integer, so if I add one unit to it, it's a positive integer. Of course, a positive integer is also a non-negative integer, and b prime is also a non-negative integer. So, for example, if I call this capital A, 
I can say therefore k plus 1 can be written in this form 3 times capital A plus 7 times B prime where A and B prime are non-negative integers okay and then we are done but what is the flaw in this argument I want to discuss about that now what is the flaw in this argument uh, you see we are supposed uh, to show we are supposed to show that p of k plus 1 is true if we know the truth of p of 12, p of 13 up to p of k. And then we also realize that there is only one of them that actually I need and that is the truth of p of k minus 2. But this argument should be valid for all uh, natural numbers greater than or equal to 12. What I'm trying to say is that implicitly in this argument, I am assuming that k is greater than or equal to 14. So it means that this argument is valid, but it is ignoring two cases. It is ignoring case k equal to 12, and it is also ignoring case k equal to 13. Why is that? Because if k is equal to 12, then k minus 2 is 10 okay but p of 10 the truth of p of 10 is not in the list of my true statements the list of my true statements starts with the truth of p of 12 and then p of 13 and it is increasing so there is no way for this sequence to cover 10 which is behind this 12 so that's the delicate point and a very important point here. So if you write this, it's even though 90% correct or even more than 19%, I don't know how to evaluate that, but it is not mathematically complete because this argument relies on the fact that k is greater than or equal to 14. If k is greater than or equal to 14, then k minus 2 is the, it greater than or equal to 12 and definitely k minus 2 becomes a, appears in my list because I see all the natural numbers greater than or equal to 12 up to point k and when k minus 2 is a natural number greater than or equal to 12 if k is greater than or equal to 14 then then definitely i will see p of k minus 2 in my list of true statements and then i can use it as a true statement and then continue and finalize the problem but it is not enough because I have to consider all k's greater than or equal 12, including 12 and 13 themselves, which this, which this argument doesn't take care of. So, what we need to do, we need to uh, actually check those uh, cases separately. Okay? So if I go to the next page and try to dissect this argument, so the argument is this, for all k natural numbers, let me ignore that writing, so greater than or equal to 12, I want to show that the truth of p of 12 and p of 13 and up to p of k minus 2 and p of k minus 1 and p of k uh, implies the truth of the next step p of k plus 1. What I just mentioned is I was able to show that the truth of this statement implies the truth of this statement if k minus 2 is in my list. Okay? Because uh, you see that the way that I presented my proof about the truth of p of k plus 1 depends on the truth of this statement p of k minus 2. And this is in my list if k minus 2 is actually greater than or equal to 12 or equivalently k is greater than or equal to 14. 
so it means that my argument is valid for this case but I have to show this validity of this argument for k greater than or equal to 12 so there are two numbers that I have uh, missed when I was doing my argument so it means that to complete it I have to consider those cases separately so let us see what happens for k equal to 12 so I mean that if you stop in the previous page that is not complete you have to add these two things manually by hand separately yes so what is p of 12 if I want to check the validity or the truth of this statement for k equal 12 when I choose k equal to 12 the left hand side only contains one uh, statement and on the right hand side p of k plus 1 becomes 13 so I need to check the truth of this so true or false we still haven't checked that okay and then the other one for k equal to 13 and that is p of 12 and p of 13 because if I choose k equal to 13 then I will have two statements on the left and on the right hand side it becomes p of the next one which is 14 I need to also check the truth of this one as well if I do this and then combining this argument that you see here if they turn out to be true with the previous one then I am done yes but this is very very easy now because now you see that this is the base of induction and we, write, we realize it is true what about this is it true or false let us check can I find two in non-negative integers such that uh, sorry uh, can I find two non-negative integers like a and b so that this becomes equal to 13 can I choose these as non-negative integers the answer is yes I can use a I can choose a equal to 2 and b equal to 1 yes first of all this becomes 13 and these are non-negative integers so now I know that this is true and now that I know this is true this p of 12 is again is true p of 13 I just showed that this is true and then I need to check p of 14 as well okay so I forgot to say that okay if I have conditional tt of course the whole statement is also true okay now I know that p of 12 is true I know that p of 13 is true I need to check p of 14 by hand so can I find two numbers a prime for example and I don't know any num any names that you want to call them to become 14 the answer is yes I choose a prime equal to 0 I choose b prime equal to 2 so it means that 3a prime plus 7b prime becomes indeed 14 and these two numbers are non-negative integers so it means that this is also true so three true and true becomes true and then two true conditional true is also true but this is why I mentioned that it's very important this problem as you see is not uh, involving heavy calculations but logically it's a very important problem if you just solve this problem in this way you are ignoring the cases for k equal to 12 and k equal to 13 which indeed you have to do that yes because uh, you need to prove this statement for all natural numbers greater than or equal to 12 okay now here I can finally write that therefore GSPMI implies that P of N is true for all n natural numbers n greater than or equal to 12 okay uh, I hope I hope that the video has been useful for you I would appreciate if you think these videos are somehow useful subscribe to my channel and if you like it please give me a thumb up until the next video uh, be safe and goodbye